Okay, so if we can start, I'd perhaps just ask you, we, we chatted a while back, but sort of an up-to-date view on how COVID's affecting the IT industry, what, what you're seeing at the moment. Well, uh, pretty much uh, the same as everyone else, Phil, really. So uh, a, a real downturn in, in, uh, in, in revenues where people are moving uh, uh, projects from what would have been Q3, Q4 into uh, 2021, Q1, Q2. So lots of businesses are, are really struggling uh, with, with, with cash flow and, and getting projects over the line. Um, and I think that's across the IT industry. I think um, software's obviously not been quite as affected um, because there are uh, different uses for this. But, but for hardware, certainly people are reviewing hardware part to purchases uh, and, uh, and larger projects are being moved to, uh, to 2021. So it's, so it's challenging. Um, and I think that it's a time that businesses need to look at, um, you know, do they prepare for the future uh, as well as trying to defend that, that their place in the market currently and, and what do they do with their staff? And I think as we come to uh, the end of furlough, that's a question for a lot of businesses. Um, and and it, it's encouraging to hear that a lot of uh, businesses in the industry are going to look at keeping those staff, but, but training them and making sure they're stronger for the return of business, hopefully in, in Q1 of 2021. But, but yeah, I think it's a, a, a worrying time for, for all leaders across, uh, across the industry. I guess that, that the obvious question then from that is you, you're launching the, uh, the Eon Store CS, if I'm right. So were you tempted maybe to think, push that launch back or I guess why, we'll put it the other way, why are you you're going ahead with the launch? What is yeah, the thing? So we, uh, we actually launched it first uh, in the UK back in March. Um, so we were right in line with, with when the pandemic hit. Um, and we've done the, you know, the bat leg uh, work in order to get that out to market. Uh, and obviously, because product development takes such a time, we didn't really want, just want that sitting without a European launch um, for you know, what maybe 12, 14, 18 months, who knows. Uh, we had already launched the product uh, across our APAC and, uh, and US markets. Um, so it has been in that market for around 12 months. But for the European launch, um, it was very important for us to, uh, to look at how we could get uh, to launch the new CS, uh, but also for us to increase revenues, especially going into an unknown period, Q4, and then perhaps the two quarters after that next year. Um, and also because it's, uh, it's a scale out uh, solution, um, so it addresses sheer volume of, of data. So it takes InfoTrend into another spectrum from where we've been before. Um, so because it improves data management, it means that we can put it into HPC um, surveillance, high level healthcare. So if you look at what's going on in the world at the moment where people need speed within those arenas um, with optimised data, which is what the CS does, it, it was the right thing for us to do to go ahead with the launch. Um, and although it's been softer, a softer launch into the market than, than perhaps we'd have hoped had it not been during COVID, uh, it was certainly the right thing to do for our business. Otherwise, we would have been 12, 14, 18 months behind schedule. Okay, and you alluded to it there. It's a sort of scale out NAS product, if I'm right. Yeah. And so I guess, um, how do you see that? You've mentioned some of the perhaps new applications, but how do you see overall increasing your sort of business or improving the business model, you know, adding to what you already do? Yeah, so if you look across uh, across Europe, historically, we've had much smaller systems. Um, so with the, with the scale out uh, NAS, as I, when I spoke to you before, we were talking about uh, new areas. So healthcare, um, oil and gas research. Our previous systems wouldn't have been able to go out to the scale that, that was needed, certainly for some of the larger blue chip organisations that we're now looking at dealing with. Um, so if you like, this shifts us in, into a different place in the market. Um, we are a tier two uh, distributor, um, sorry, manufacturer but this takes us to uh, to, to the, the top end of that tier um, and, and really allows us to play with some of the bigger boys and in terms of the feedback you say obviously the product you say you know, previously it was in the states and then the yeah you know, it's been in europe for a little while so so what is the feedback you're getting from customers whether it was in the, the you know, previous test phase or actually now in the field when you yeah, know, so folks are using it the, the, the feedback is positive i mean obviously there is always room for improvement with a, with a new product uh, we did have a, a an independent review done three weeks ago which is uh, available for for people to see um and that gave it a four out of five star so uh, very much within the, the price range so we're we are very keen on price as, as with all in for trend products um, so the feedback is that you know based on price and based that it's brand new to the market um, certainly it's something that can be utilized uh, in the areas that, 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 that we've been looking at and in terms of the few I mean 
we're all aware of the uh, the uncertain nature of that future. But do you have any sort of roadmap plans for the, the, the CS system in terms of next year, what you'd like to achieve, whether it's additions to it in, or, you know, just obviously increasing its uh, sort of footprint? Yeah, of course. So, so we had some really key partnerships at the moment. So we've started working with uh, with Net Company, who are uh, world renowned in the in the IT industry, uh, as a key partner. They will be taking the CS to market um, across the the public sector. Um, they'll be working very closely with Global Distribution, who are um, our key one of our key distribution partners. And then with us, so if you like, it's a complete three tier channel approach um, to uh, to the market. As well as that, we'll be working with other uh, key resellers and distributors uh, not just in the UK but across Europe to really look at drilling down into becoming part of uh, 2021 business plans for organisations. So our Q4 is very much about penetrating those markets uh, where we see um, possibilities uh, that we know are despite the, the COVID situation going to need our product and make sure we're part of their business plan and budget for, for 2021. So you know the, the key for us is very much about partnership um, throughout the channel um, to ensure, you know, maximum exposure, brand awareness, uh, and, and of course that leads to results. And in, just in terms of that sort of channel mix, it, uh, are there some of the companies, dare I say, sort of generalists and some of those specialists, you, you, you obviously reference yeah. HPC and maybe, you know, the AI market's growing. So you're looking for a mixture of so people that just have a, a range of customers and some that specialise in, in certain Yeah, industries. absolutely. So, so for the longevity of our business, we have to have uh, different tiers. Yeah. So we, we take on product specialists um, with regards to within our resellers and our distribution uh, network who are specific to, as I say, public sector. We also have generalists as well. Um, and, and for us, if we look at, and we're talking about the CS here, uh, this is our high spend um, long-term solution product product yeah uh, we also then off the back of that through these new uh, distribution channels can look at additional infotrend products uh, off the back of, of cs so you know cs may be for the very very top uh, end of, of public sector and that then leads us on to other opportunities um through uh, through those channels so so we, we have gone specialist in our approach um, because we think that's where the growth is going to be when we look at, you know, the media and entertainment business, uh, which is where our core business has been for 25 years, um, is probably not going to recover until the end of 2021. Um, so, you know, we have to have this new targeted approach with, with new partners um, who are specific to the industries that we are, we, we are looking uh, to target. And just before we finish, I mean, we're, we're aware, you know, through the news and stuff, all the industry sectors that are you know really feeling the the, the pinch in the in the current scenario i mean how do you see the it industry i suppose everyone's been moving to like we're doing zoom and stuff so you know there's obviously been growth but i guess you know as industry sectors potentially disappear and stuff will that impact on the fact that you know, obviously those companies no longer need it solutions so i guess how do you yeah. characterize that you know the yeah, IT I, I, it's, it's a bit of carrot and stick I think so. Uh, look, I, I think that some. Uh, I think we'll lose some smaller uh, IT businesses, software and hardware um, distributors, manufacturers, and resellers. Um, and I think that it, that's why it's key at, at this stage. Um, to have a short-term plan. Obviously, it's been very reactive for a lot of businesses. Um, but I think that those businesses that have worked hard over the last six months to look at what life is going to be like after Q4, rather than just looking at up to Q4 of this year, will be in a better position. Um, but uh, look, we haven't got a crystal ball, but I, but I don't think it's all doom and gloom. Um, and I just think it's about um, being able to move into the crep markets or the markets where you're... you're um, your systems or your hardware can be used um, but uh, but yeah I mean it's certainly it's going to be a very very uh, difficult probably six to nine months um, on top of what we've already had and, and it's about making sure that you know uh, those of us who can, imp can influence the market and support our teams do so. And just quickly on that on that customer front I mean you identified the fact obviously that everyone sort of initially panicked and it was all you know sort of elastic bands, I don't know, whatever, you know, to try and get a solution yeah. to, to help them work in the short term. Are you beginning to have conversations, I guess, with customers as to that, you know, longer term, you know, the hybrid model that people are talking about, or is it still yeah, firefighting or, or what's that? Yeah, I 
I think uh, it depends on the size of the business. I think some of the uh, the larger organisations, so uh, FTSE 100 commercial businesses, are obviously a lot more planned. Um, I think that some smaller businesses are reactive because they're still having to be. Yeah. Um, so some of these guys are absolutely fighting for survival. Um, and, uh, you know, unfortunately, I think they will be some of the ones that, that we will lose. But, you know, I, I just hope that as a, as a community and as an industry, uh, people can pull together with experiences in order to help, you know, all businesses with, within uh, within sectors over the coming six to nine months. But I think it's, uh, you know, a, a realisation that we will lose some. OK, well, thanks a lot for sharing those thoughts with us. Uh, and, and thank you again. Thank you very much. Cheers.